Hi there, I'm Black Bright and um, thank you all for subscribing. Continue to subscribe, continue to share and continue to like. Um, you never, I never know what I'm going to talk about. I always say this, but it's true. Now this evening I thought I'd have a nice early night, just go to bed. But then I thought, you know what? I need to check my bank balance to see if I've got enough money until next week. So I go into my um, account, my online account, and up pops this message. And it says, I'm going to read it. I'm not going to read it word for word because I didn't write out all of it. It takes too long. But I'll give you the gist of it. It said, new regulation to fight fraud and increase security of online payments. Strong customer authentication, in brackets, SCA. The whole banking sector is making changes to be compliant with the regulation. SCA is to accommodate changes to online shopping transactions and internet banking. So what do I do? I decide to put strong customer authentication in my browser. I'm like, what does that mean? So I put it into my browser and what pops up? PSD2. P for Papa, S for Sugar, D for Delta. Two. And what PSD2 is, it's a new EU directive that's coming out in September 2019, which is going to change the way we do our online shopping. Now, at the moment, we kind of, we're going to buy something. If we go on eBay, um, you either do it through PayPal or use your credit card account. Your, your bank will probably come up with that verification thing. And, you know, once you put in your few details, the transaction goes through. Well, as of September 2019, it's totally different. There's not going to be the middleman, the Visa card and the MasterCard. And it's also going to be third parties. It could be any what they call trusted, in quote, third parties. These third parties will have access to your bank account. So suppose you're going to take out a loan. They won't have to tell you uh, to send you three months of your bank statements. They will just go into your bank account and they'll be able to tell you whether or not you can afford, based on your payments over the last three to six months, whether or not you can afford the loan. Now, why, why I got that warning is because the banks know that they could actually be cut out of this thing altogether. So what they're doing to protect themselves and their relationship with their customers is to warn us that there's going to be a two-step um, verification, what they call authentication. That authentication is going to be in addition to you putting in your username and your password. You'll probably be asked for your date of birth, your pass number, also, you're going to need your biometrics, so you're going to have to put in your um, fingerprint or your facial recognition. It's all getting a bit mysterious here. Now, this is for you to do any online transaction. It's supposed to be much quicker. I don't see how it's going to be quicker unless you live in a house by yourself and you've got nobody um, who's going to pick up your details. But even then, I don't think you can do that automatic, remember my password with this two-stage authentication. What's going to happen is they're going to, you know, I don't know if you've just installed WhatsApp recently with this um, scam thing that was going on. Apparently, WhatsApp was invaded. And so you had to uninstall WhatsApp and um, reinstall it. And when you do that, you get this authentication code or verification code that, to make sure that you're using the phone that you have registered with them. And then if you do, you'll put in that six digit code and then they'll um, then you can download WhatsApp. It's going to be a similar thing. So they'll ask you to confirm your 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 email address and they'll ask you to confirm your um 
mobile number because that is how they're going to use that verification process. I don't know quite how it works if you change your phone or you change your number. I mean, um, I don't know how that's going to work. The problem is with this is that, you know, yes, it's all... Um, we all become vulnerable to scammers and stuff like that. But I think what is more insidious is the fact that you're being asked to put your biometric details into your phone. Now, some of us, we do it for ease. We just say, oh, fingerprint, that's fine. But when you feel as though you're compelled to do that in order to make a purchase, that's not such a great idea. Or you have to use your fingerprint to make a purchase. I mean, some people, they feel quite comfortable with it. Um, some people who are a bit sceptical about where, um, how many people have that biometric information, but that's a different thing. And what happens to that biometric information? Or Because they reckon that they've got this API, which is an application and program interface. And it's like, um, it's, it's what talks to all the different, people that you're dealing with you know like Expedia if you want to have if you want to book a hotel it goes to all the different hotels and it goes to all the different um, rental cars and all that and it brings you up with all this information that's what the API does so um, I don't even know why I said the API and I've lost my um, train of thought but the fact of the matter is is that um Apparently, with the API, you are meant to be, it is supposed to be more secure. Um, let me see. Um, oh, yes. Um, a requirement of the EU revised directive of payment services requires three things to take place in order for you to buy. That's your name and your password, which I mentioned. Your ownership, I mean, you'd have to have the, the card, I guess, to say the security number on the back. Actually, it's more than a two-way authentication when you think about it. Because you would think that once you put your name and your password in, you know, they know it's you. But that's not going to be enough anymore. Um, yeah, because and the, the other thing is that, that the number on the back, that's normally authentication. And the expiry code is normally enough to authenticate. So I don't understand why they need all of this additional biometrics and goodness knows what else to authenticate a purchase. I think because the banks are going the banks don't want to be liable if for anything that goes wrong. So now when you do the when you do all this thumbprinting and all this face recognition you are responsible for the purchase and you have you have authorized it providing it's been authenticated doubly authenticated you are going to be responsible if it's not um if there's no double authentication the bank will be responsible um what else do you need to know okay there are exemptions um any payments up to 30 pounds you don't have to go through the authentication process or three is it three five times 30 pounds so you can buy something for five pounds you know go out and buy five pounds five times 30 pounds different things for 30 pounds and you don't need the authentication um, also with the contact list it's 50 pounds you can purchase anything with 50 pounds contact list and five different purchases of 50 pounds um, it's exempt for parking fees and tolls corporate payments but with corporate payments they're going to ask you to authenticate every 90 days or there and get bouts um, yeah, it's, on the, it's going to take effect on the 14th of September this year. And yeah, yeah, this thing with the loan business where they can look up your details. I don't know what, how, how you feel about that. On the one hand, you could think, OK, um, they're going to see your bank details anyway because you've got to give them your statements. But at least you have control over that because sometimes people wait until they've got a nice steady um bank statement that you know that looks reasonable um, before they submit it for a mortgage or whatever or a loan this way though 
once you've given them authenticate or authorize them to um, access your account so you're going to have to be once again very wary what you sign and what you're agreeing to um this gives them authority to do that for you so you won't have to supply them with your bank statements they actually have access to your account personally i don't like that idea um you can double check this i mean just put psd2 i mean into the browser like i did you'll find a lot of things about it some of them are quite long some of them are quite quick um yeah but i think you know sometimes when we see these things like me i mean it's only because I'm quite curious. I'm, I was wondering what um, they meant by that strong customer authentication because they they put it down so superficially. You look at it and you just think, oh, well, it's just they're protecting me. I wouldn't have associated that, that, that prompt that I got on my, on my bank app with a new EU directive. I wouldn't have associated the two. And I would definitely wouldn't have thought that that had anything to do with um, third parties have, being able to access my account. So that's why I thought I'd share that with you, because I don't know how many of you people know this. I mean, there'll probably be some of you that do. Um, OK, so you're going to come across some acronyms. I said PSD2. That stands for Payment Services Directive. That's a new le legislation that's been that's been coming out with the EU um, September, um, September this year. APIs, that stands for Application Programming Interface. And I gave you the example of Expedia. PSP, Payment Service Provider. I think that's all you know. Oh yeah, also what's important is that when you do, um, when it does come into force, and it applies to all online banking, any purchase you do online, you do have the option to give it minimum scope. So they don't have to access everything. It, I guess it all depends on who you're dealing with, who you're trusting with, like some people, if they are dealing with mortgage providers and you know they're getting loans, they might think, oh, I can't be asked, let them get on with it. I've got nothing to hide. They're going to see the statement anyway. So it doesn't necessarily mean that all third parties are going to see everything in your bank account. You can request or you can, uh, there must be something you can tick or something that gives them minimum scope, medium scope and maximum scope. You just have to know which scope you are ticking off. So you don't give somebody full access to your account who you never intended to. Um, I suggest, as always, that you do your own research, that you look this up. Um, if you're worried about it or if you want to know more about it, just put PSD for Delta 2 into your browser. Or you can put in like what I did, strong customer authentication. Lots of things come up. APIs will come up and all that kind of stuff. The EU directive will come up and you might even get more information than I did, but I didn't really want this to go on very long. So it's short and sweet. Bye for now.